do so. I'll never know. All right, hey guys. My name is Eric Wilkinson. We're doing a webinar on the short call. This is the roadmap to trading options. We're doing this a little bit different than some of my other webinars where we've uh, kind of built out other webinars where we just go through and talk about the internals, if you will. Well, this is kind of like set up along the lines of we have uh, a bearish assumption, kind of like what Lawrence was talking about before this started off with getting short some IWM. Well. We have a bearish assumption. We want to maybe add some negative deltas to an overall long portfolio. Well, today is a perfect example of why we need to have a diversified portfolio, not just in different sectors being uh, transports or uh, tech, uh, biotech or um, you know staples. That's a good diversified portfolio, but you are, so, are beholden to a bullish move uh, in your portfolio to make money. Well, what I like to talk about with trading options is the only way to really increase that overall yield and not be beholden to the overall market uh, movements is to add diversification through options, whether that is dollar cost averaging, like I was talking about before this webinar um, about some I was long Intel and selling puts against that to dollar cost average. And if I don't get hit on those puts, we lower our overall cost basis on those stocks we own. Well, what this is, is this is going to be on the short call. This is going to add negative deltas to a overall long portfolio in order to take advantage of any type of market correction foreseen or unforeseen. So we need to be diligent with our portfolio by adding different option strategies to that portfolio. But with this particular webinar, we're going to be talking about those guidelines that we need to follow. If we have a bearish assumption in any given underlying, what we do is we follow these guidelines in order to find the right strategy. It's not always when we have a bearish assumption going out there and buying puts or just selling a short call. We need to really uh, think about how our uh, market assumption is going to work and then find the right strategy that works best for that assumption. You know, with this one here, we can be directionally wrong. The market continues to rally and still make money um, and, and or trade sideways. So it's a great way to add negative deltas. I'm also going to go into a little bit more detail. If you watched last week's webinar where we talked about the short call spread, adding negative deltas there, uh, that is, quote, unquote, a lower risk strategy, right? Well, if you played along, you saw that uh, I got out of that short call spread because the market went against me. And that was because the, we'll talk about the difference here. Uh, the, the probabilities of a short call spread uh, being tested are almost twice as much as a short call outright naked. Uh, so which one is higher risk? Is it the one that has less probability of being tested or the one that has more of an unlimited um, risk parameter to the upside, which the short call spread would. Um, but in my eyes, I like to look at it, but I'm also, keep in mind, I'm keeping an eye on my uh, portfolio on a daily basis. So, you know, I, my stop is my, my mouse, my trigger on my mouse. So, uh, that I don't let get away from me either. So um, something to be said for that. You're going to have to kind of think in your head, you know, is it is it better off to play the probabilities as risk or is it better to lean towards knowing what my risk parameters are on a certain trade? All right. Um, you know. I would say that just getting long stock or something like that has a pretty high risk parameter also, right? Because it has pretty much unlimited risk to the downside as well. We could see in today's market action, it felt pretty <laughs> unlimited to the downside, right? Uh, so there's always that. But this is going to be on the short calls, uh, outright naked. But let me get a couple of things out of the way real quick, and then we'll start talking about this strategy a little bit more. My name's Eric Wilkinson. You very well may recognize me from mainstream media where I've talked about economic, geopolitical, and uh, how that impacts the markets with my market analysis. I've been trading in uh, stocks, financial futures, commodity futures, currencies, and options on all these products for a little over 25 years now. So the thing with the options is when I traded on the floor, 
we weren't always able to pick and choose like we can uh, from off the floor as to what strategy we want to put into our portfolio. It was kind of like I'd make markets on things and have to take the other side of a trade. That isn't always the best situation. And from that, I've learned when, where, and why it is the time and place to put on certain strategies. You know, I, I've had to work through a strategy that was kind of put into my portfolio um, and had to work around some of these headwinds that we'll even talk about here today in this webinar. Beauty is now we can avoid all that stuff. We are the ones that get to make those choices. Uh, it's a much more uh, fun place to be, to be honest. All right, so Twitter, you can follow me on uh, at Wolfman's blog. You can follow me also at Pro Trader Strategy or Pro Trader Strat. This isn't actually me, but this is our parent company. We throw out all kinds of good trading content on that. You can get all kinds of snark and hopefully some trading wisdom from me there. Uh, ProTraderStrategies.com on Facebook. Great place to get some free content. We're throwing stuff out there almost every day. Uh, we don't put out all my daily market commentaries, but you can check out a few of those. Uh, and follow along there. You know, I am one of those people that says, uh, you know, these daily market commentaries, I don't give out trade recommendations. It's up to you guys to determine whether or not these strategies are appropriate for you. But one thing is, is you guys can follow along with me. I, I'm not cherry picking the best trades and saying, hey, you could have made 500% on this particular one uh, and forget about the ones that are losers, you know. Last week, we talked about with the short call spread, I put on that BABA trade. So you could have followed along that trade with me, how I um, worked through that whole situation um, in those daily market commentaries. I was not just cherry picking anything for just those winners that I was having uh, last week in my daily market commentaries. All right. So without further ado, let's get on with it. This is the short call. It's a naked strategy. There's going to be unlimited risk in this. So Make sure it is appropriate for you. But on the flip side of that, it is a high probability of success strategy. Uh, but let's go over the roadmap. This is the uh, roadmap to trading options. This is the roadmap key. This is like knowing which roads are what when you're looking at a map. This is something as important as that when we are going to trade in the options and looking at that option montage. I know a lot of you are. Uh, returning, but there are several people out there that probably have not seen this part. So uh, I want to briefly go over it to make sure everybody is on the same page before we start moving along. All right. So I'm not trying to scare you with the Greeks, but let's just go over this real quick. These are simple ways to remember these. Uh, something to note. Let me make sure I got my pen all set up for this before we start getting going. All right. So Delta. Delta is data. It tells us all kinds of things. There's about five, six things that Delta will tell us, probabilities of being in the money, probabilities of being touched. But one of the main things we really need to know is how Delta is affecting the option premium in relation to that underlying. So if we think about this, uh, these Greeks, think about them as you're always moving forward, all right? Uh, you're not moving back. They're, the assumption is moving forward or moving higher, okay? So with Delta, it's talking about a dollar move higher, okay? It's basically on $1 move higher. How that delta affects those premiums in that option montage. So what we are gonna do is pull up the option montage. And uh, when I'm talking about the option montage, it's on this particular page, whether or not you have TD Ameritrade or some other platform. What we're gonna do is check this out. It's all the different monthlies. I want you to uh, focus in on the delta here. We drop down. Let's just check these ones that are just out of the money, the 55 calls, all right? This delta is saying it's 28. So that means for a dollar move higher in Intel, it goes from $50.39 to $51.39. One exact dollar. Basically, our premiums would increase by that 28 cents. So now our bid uh, bid offer on this particular strike, and it's all going to be the corresponding delta, right? So the corresponding delta here we're talking about is the uh, 28 cents, right? So $1 move higher, we're at 51.39, 
right? We move up by 28 cents. This is going to basically be uh, a bid of 132, right? The offer is going to basically be 136, right? So that bid would change, the bid offer would change. That's everything being equal. You know, we haven't even had a minute go by this happens. Uh, we also haven't had uh, the volatility over here change at all. None of that's changed, just a $1 move higher. Now, like today, we've had a negative move. So what happens when we see a negative move and it goes down from uh, $50.39 and now we're talking about $49? and 39 cents, right? Well, that's a negative, that's a negative dollar move. We've had a negative move. So think about it this way. We have a negative plus a positive, then that now this delta is actually negative. So we would have lost 28 cents out of those premiums, okay? Vice versa on the flip side, um, if we're looking at the put side, right? A negative dollar move plus a we have a negative plus a positive, then this would become a positive delta. So on a dollar move down, we would see 44 cents going into these 50 puts, right? All right, so then we would be basically at $2.59 on the bid, all right? So a negative plus a positive makes those negatives uh, work in your favor, all right? Um, then we go over to gamma, and gamma is basically the rate of change to delta. Now that may seem a little bit wanky, uh, but what this is basically saying is that's on dollar number two. So the first dollar over here moved higher. We had 28 cents going into these, right? So we were at, when we were at $51, and let me make that green just so it's, uh, I don't confuse, $51.39. We had these bids go up by 28 cents, right? So 28 cents went into here and we were saying we were at $1.32 and $1.36, right? That was on that first dollar move. Well, now this gamma goes into delta. So that's the easiest way to remember gamma. Gamma goes with delta. So on the second dollar move, now we go move up to $52.39. So this is dollar number one uh, plus one dollar. And now we're basically looking at plus uh, two dollars total. And on the second dollar, gamma goes in there. So now we're looking at 33 cents adding in here. So on that second dollar move, we could assume that our uh, bid would be $1.65 and this would be $1.69, all right, on that second dollar move. This is plus $1, and this would be on plus $2. Because remember that delta, that delta added in on the first dollar, we keep, it's, it retains that, and then on the second dollar, you add it in to the gamma, the, or sorry, gamma adds into the delta. So what we're thinking here is gamma, Gamma goes with delta, All right? So easy way to remember that, and that is this is dollar plus one dollar, and this is on uh, the plus number two dollars. So first first dollar move, gamma doesn't affect it, but the second dollar move, it adds in there. And you can kind of see that show up in the um, option montage as well if you kind of like scale through it. You know, um, if we were to look at a uh, six dollar, uh, well, we'd need something that was dollar increments. Let's flip over to XLE. It'll be a little bit easier to see this. But you can see that um, if we were looking at these thirty-seven calls over here, you can kind of see what happens there. Thirty-seven calls over here. We're looking at these, and we we take that gamma. Right, we had that two dollar move. The gamma uh, is shown up in that delta there. That seven cents has gone into that delta uh, over there. If you can see that, right? Twenty eight plus seven is thirty five. So you can kind of see it that way. You know, some people kind of visualize things a little bit differently, but that's also a way to kind of see that happening. Now, it doesn't always look exactly like that because remember this these 
delta, gamma, um, vega, theta, all of those really have, a, you know, they go out to the probably 10,000th of a um, decimal. So ours are all rounding up and sometimes it gets, it, it, it looks a little off by maybe a penny or so. So uh, don't let that confuse you um, if you're looking at that. Like, oh, Wolfman said it was going to move up by seven cents. It only moved up by six. Well, it may have been uh, a rounding error there. All right. So in theta, theta is that thief in the night is what we used to call it on the floor. He's the thief in the night that comes and steals your premium. So keep in mind, this is a, a day goes by. You can't go back in time. So uh, theta is always a negative in the option montage. And you can't really make it a positive because we can't go back in time. But you'll see here that theta in this column is all negative. So tomorrow we could expect these premiums right here closer to the at the monies are going to decrease by two cents. That's all things being equal. Tomorrow we open up exactly at $34.98 and cents in XLE. The volatility doesn't change at all. Those, those premiums would decrease by the corresponding theta. Something to note with theta though, you guys, further out in time, it's a little less aggressive. He gets really aggressive closer to the expiration. So we look out 100 uh, days out, you can see it's a little bit less aggressive. It's a little bit more apparent. If we look at something like um, that's over $100, you'll see a bigger discrepancy there. But you can see two, two three cents here and way out uh, 134 days away, those same at the monies are only about two cents there. So it starts getting a little bit more aggressive and we are 43 days out. We could see even further in, you can see now it starts really ramping up. It's almost doubled just within 35 days. So just to get those cogs working, right? Get the head spinning, get your hands going in double direct, opposite directions. Anybody do that? Opposite directions? Can you tell? Uh, anyway, <laughs> it's a little trick of mine. Try and get your hands to go in opposite directions. Can you see that? All right. Um, anyway, <laughs> sidetrack. But theta starts really building up closer to expiration. So sometimes we want to take advantage of that, right? If you're selling premium or uh, like we're talking about in the short call, well, if I'm selling, I'm short shorting selling a call where do i want to be doing that do i want to be doing it a hundred some odd days out well i guess if you're thinking very long term you could do that but most of us are thinking you know ins and outs on different corrections and stuff like that and to be holding a short call or a, a, a short for that matter and maybe a long for some of us you know 43 days is plenty of time to fulfill our market assumption. I, I don't try to look out two, three years necessarily, all right? Uh, maybe in my IRA, I put some trades in there that I talk about in the daily market commentaries that I want to hold on to for a long period of time. And yes, then, then I'm playing it a little bit different. I'm selling covered calls, which would be the short call um, at about the same strike location too. So if you have uh, ever want to do a, a covered call, this would be um, very similar to that. Uh, I'm not going to be talking about the owning the underlying, but the strike location is going to be very similar. Um, but in and and the time to expiration, all of that stuff is going to be very similar. So uh, I want to try and capture that theta decay when I am shorting a call. That's one of those things. So we're already knowing that with theta and being the thief in the night that really starts picking up the closer and closer to expiration. That's something I want to take advantage of. So uh, just to kind of get your head thinking about that closer to, uh, before we get moving along too closely, you know, we're doing the short call spread, despite the fact that I want you to kind of put that on the shelf right now. We haven't determined that we're doing the short call spread or the short call, I should say, uh, just yet. But moving forward, we're going to be uh, kind of doubling back on that. So theta is the thief in the night that comes and steals our premium. We can't go back in time, so we can't make this a positive. We can kind of limit it by getting further out in time. Uh, but, you know, you can also take advantage of uh, it by 
getting closer to expiration and that theta thief in the night to come and steal our premium will help us out. All right, so that's theta, the thief. All right, Vega. Vega uh, measures the change in volatility uh, in those premiums. So, and again, it's a one percentage point change. Sorry, I tried to click on this so I could pull up the option montage again. So this is assuming that we get a positive move higher, all right, because everything's assumed we're moving forward or moving higher. So Vega over here is assuming we get a plus 1%, all right? So if it moves up by 1% and moves to $32, or sorry, 32.16%, right? So we've got one percentage point move higher. Volatility here, this Vega coefficient, is going to then add into the premiums on the calls and in the puts over here. So that will go in there um, and increase, all right? And on the flip side, if you got a negative 1% uh, move, right? Just 1% and now it was at $30 or 30.16%. It's a negative, right? So a negative would then, a negative move would then make that a negative uh, Vega and those premiums would decrease by that amount, all right? So one thing to note about Vega is we need to determine, are these premiums expensive or cheap for, say, Procter & Gamble, all right, or, um, or BABA, like we talked about last week, right? Um, what, we have a couple of little tricks that we're going to talk about here shortly, but there are some ways to determine whether 32 is high or low. Now, you guys might be saying 32 is really low because you're used to looking at something like Tesla, right? Tesla probably never gets down to 32. So what we need to, every underlying is created differently in this regard, all right? So we need to uh, really be specific with implied volatility, which is Vega, is another name for Vega. It's, it's truly implied volatility for that underlying. So I need to start getting the wheels turning to determine whether or not we have high implied volatility or low volatility. Like we could look at, at BABA, which is one of those examples we were looking at last week, and it's got 56. We might see that BABA almost rarely, if ever, gets down to that 30-ish area, okay? Or especially something like Tesla, which is, I'm sure, uh, going through the roof on, on volatility right now, you know, one one twenty three, right? And volatility for this is the implied volatility chart. You can see that Baba, um, or what was it, uh, thirty two, uh, in Procter and Gamble, never uh, does Tesla ever get down that low. Thirty six is its lowest it's been in the last fifty two weeks, right? So. You know, that's why we need to look at that implied volatility, which is telling us what Vega is. Uh, the numbers will be slightly different depending on the month, but this is the current implied volatility, which implied volatility versus historic volatility, guys. Implied volatility is forward-looking volatility. It's the expectation of future volatility. Historical volatility tells us where we are in relation to where volatility has been in the past. Uh, you watch the daily market commentaries, you know I even look at economic data points that are forward looking more so than the ones that were uh, already in the past. So I like to look for forward looking just about everything. Implied volatility fits that bill. So um, implied volatility is forward looking. So I'm gonna look at that more so than historical volatility. All right, so everybody, we're on the same page and we can see you know, when I was talking about one percentage point changes in that premium, right, we were just trying to narrow it down to one percentage point. You can see in just a matter of days, volatility in BABA here has gone from 49 to 56. So we've got seven percentage point moves in BABA. So let's just go over and look at a seven percentage point move higher, which means that it's going to increase. 
basically we're looking at the volatility coefficient here of seven times 40, let's call it. So uh, what is that? Um, 28 or $2.80. These premiums right here at the money have increased by yeah, $2.80 just on that move, right? So that, you know, could be if you had, um, say, uh, sold some calls in this a couple of days ago, even though that down move happened, it could be very well offsetting some of those uh, directional moves. Now, it's gone down by uh, 13, 14, $13. So in this case, it's it's not offsetting it completely, but it, it's offsetting some of that move for sure. All right. All right. So without further ado, let's get on with it. We've gotten the we've gotten the Greeks out of the way. Hopefully nobody's brains are on the wall because I blew them out. Remember, delta is just data. It also tells us how much our premiums are going to change. I want to specifically talk about how premiums are changing with these Greeks right now. Gamma goes with delta. That's on the second dollar. Theta is the thief in the night that comes and steals our premiums. And Vega is just uh, the measure of change of volatility. Vega is also uh, implied volatility, which is what we want to look at. Forward looking stuff. All right. So let's talk about this. Let me close all this stuff out. All right, I mentioned, let's just stick with the BABA trade. I, I got out of my BABA short call spread. Um, it was not a winner. So I talked about that in the daily market commentary. Um, and I'm, the reason why I want to stick with BABA, I, I still want to get into it. Um, you know, I got into BABA last week based on this market set up right here. We've got that doji. We got it again, but it's a red candle. Last, last time it was a... Uh, a uh, green candle, but I did get confirmation, so I played it. But, you know, I said if it breaks above this technical setup, I'm out of this trade. Um, and uh, we've got another one where it's it's set up. We've got a topping with a confirmation candle. It's below the nine-day moving average. So uh, what I'm saying is I am uh, bearish in BABA, all right? I'm still kind of bearish in BABA. I think it's got some headwinds. Whatever reason you guys come out with to have your uh, market assumption, I'm just giving you guys my market assumption and how I do this stuff on a daily basis, right? Uh, last week I talked about, I think the market's gonna wanna try and cover this gap, fill in that little gap that we've got there on a bearish move. I've talked about they've had some headwinds. Um, you know, I do think that they, you know, it's a solid platform, but, it, is this going to be one of those TikTok things, right? Where uh, it's a Chinese company and um, is the U.S. going to kind of shut down on them and, and try and get some U.S. investors in there? I don't know. So, you know, I think that it probably will want to try and cover this bit of a gap here. Um, we've got the confirmation. It's below the 90 moving average, whatever. I, I've got a bearish assumption in that. So where are we going, right? That's basically what we're talking about with this. Where are we going? We're gonna to go to BABA. I wanna to go to BABA. All right, and that is bearish. All right, so I've got a, a bearish assumption in BABA. All right, now, I, like I said, this is where I want you to forget about the call, short call, right? We're just gonna kind of walk through the steps. We just, come up with our assumption and whatever. Now we have to figure out uh, what we're doing and we're gonna go down to uh, BABA, wherever it is. Let's just say it's here because I haven't used Phoenix uh, yet. We're gonna go to BABA and this is me up here or wherever you wanna be. Maybe it's Indianapolis, the crossroads of America, which I believe is actually gonna be, yeah, it's right there. Um, so uh, that's me. So we're gonna take a move to the, you know, the bearish side. So um, we know we have a bearish assumption. Uh, and, you know, you could even have a bearish to market neutral. I'm, I'm bearish in it, so I'm going to play it. But, um, you know, I, I'm let's just say I'm worried about the neutral, the neutral move here. So obviously, uh, this is Indy right there. Um, and I'm going to Baba. I'm gonna 
head south somehow. How am I going to get there? You know, I might go this way, right? Which would be the mark. I'm, I'm worried about a market neutral assumption and kind of do that. Uh, maybe I think it's going to kind of work itself out. However, uh, but you know, at some point, I do believe we are going to head south in this. But I'm a little bit worried that you know maybe there's a detour I got to take and go that way, which is going to throw me off my my path a little bit. So I want to protect against something like that. So uh, we, we've kind of gotten our, our thought process on how we came up with our assumption, you know, in relation to our, our trip pattern there. Uh, do we have a good destination? Now this is, you know, is Phoenix a good place to, to go? Well, you might be saying not right now. It's 120 degrees down there. I don't want to be going to Phoenix. Well, what I'm talking about here is, is it a good destination? Is there a lot of things for you to do when you get here? Yes, there's hiking, there's, uh, um, you know, different resorts, golf, everything. Yes, there's, there's all kinds of things that will fit any person. There's a lot of uh, things to do for different types of people. So uh, is it a good destination? Well, what I really want is, you know, are there a lot of eyeballs on there, right? Do we have a lot of people kind of, you know, in the markets is really what I, I want to convey here. Uh, is there free market price discovery going on? And what we do with this one um, is for this guideline is to uh, pull up the option montage. And um, I probably should have, have something that is during open market operations, you guys. So we're going to look at the spot month. And it's really with 15 days to go, people are starting to roll their uh, trades out in time. And we are starting to get a little bit more open interest and volume going on in uh, the October. Uh, if you want to know the ARB sim for October, uh, it is the um, Star Trek V or whatever. Uh, so October is going to become more and more the place where there's a lot of volume and open interest. That's going to be where most people are concentrating their trades. Okay. So is it a good destination? Meaning is BABA liquid? Is there free market price discovery going on in BABA? All right. And one of the ways that we're going to do that is during open market operations, look at the option montage. And if it's a stock over a hundred dollars, then we move the decimal three ticks to the left, and that's where we're going to see uh, whether or not we have good open interest. So basically, um, 30 cents wide to the bid offer, and this is during open market operations. It's not working out right now. You can see these are uh, 70, 85 cents wide there. Uh, so, you know, it's not fitting that rule right now, but during open market operations, and I don't have a uh, I don't think I have a screenshot of it from before uh, the market. Um, so let's just take a look at something like um, that might still have uh, have tight bid ass because you know, especially with today being very crazy, people are probably canceling all their orders. They don't want to stick around. So uh, twelve cents wide is where these should be, and you can see they're thirty-five cents wide at least. So the markets have gotten wide after the close. You want to make sure you check this during open market operations. So uh, if we are looking at something that is, I don't want that. I want my pen. So what we want to do is kind of take a look at this. We basically move our decimal place three ticks to the left and say, if it's uh, greater than a hundred dollar stock, then I want my markets down here, just out of the money to be uh, moving three ticks left. So we're looking at 12 cents, right? So I want it to be uh, less than or equal to 12 cents on stocks that are greater than $100 or you, you know, you move the decimal place there. If it's less than $100 stock, then I want it to be less than or equal to uh, 10 cents, right? So in this one up here, if it's a $300 stock, for example, you move it three ticks to the left, like in BABA, then we're looking at 30 cents. So I would want that to be less than or equal to 
uh, 30 cents, all right? And in that regard, if we're looking at it as relation to a uh, roadmap, right? We could say that if it fits that rule, then that's a green light, all right? If it's basically two times the rule, that's a yellow light. And if it's three times the rule, that's a red light, all right? That means we don't necessarily want to be trading options in and around that because the bid offer gets way too wide. That means that everybody's, they're, they're out of town. There's maybe one person in that one horse town that's willing to make you markets. You know, I want to go into the, uh, if I'm buying apples, I want to go into the market where there's 10 different tents with 10 different people trying to sell me apples. That way I know that the price of apples is going to be pretty uh, uh, pretty good, right? Uh, I know that there is enough room to barter in there. If I come in and tell one guy, hey, you know, I'll pay 30 cents for that apple, uh, I might be able to then finagle uh, my pricing and get better pricing, right? Well, the same thing goes on with when there's free market price discovery going on in the option montage, I don't necessarily have to pay the offer in order to get filled, right? Which could very well be, you know, uh, on a hundred dollar stock, 50 cents higher in order to get filled or sell at 50 cents, you know, to the bid. Uh, it's $8 and 50 cents at $9 or something like that. I may have to go all the way down to that $8 and 50 cent bid to get filled. Uh, whereas when free market price discovery is in full swing, I come in and just, you know, make a better offer. Uh, all of a sudden, I might be able to see the bid start upticking, and then we start kind of uh, dickering back and forth until we meet in the middle or maybe a little bit higher, you know, uh, and get filled at a better price than just having to go and find that person that's willing to take the other side of the trade. So we want to avoid uh, any really wide markets versus what the underlying is doing. Now, yes, you can. Uh, go in and just switch it over to volume and open interest. You can see that Apple obviously has really good open interest and tons of volume at any given day. So, you know, during the day, you're going to see Apple have nickel wide bid offer, all right, because there's so many people in there uh, putting bids and offers in there that the markets get really tight. Um, so make sure that you're following that. It's got to be during open market operations, though. All right. I wish I would have taken a screenshot. I should have. I, th I think I got one further down the road here, which is I'm trying to look down my thing and I can't see it. Um, so what is the environment? All right. Now, when I'm talking about environment, I'm talking about implied volatility. What we need to know is that Vega number, right? We need to know if that Vega number is really high for that specific underlying or really low. So you could say, what is the environment? Well, when volatility is really low, it's kind of like you got sunny skies. There's no, there's no inclement weather. Uh, you're, uh, you got free rain to just about do anything. You can go and hit the roadside attractions. You can enjoy the trip. You can put the top down on the uh, convertible and and enjoy the road. There's no stresses. You can see for miles, right? Even at night, you can see for miles. Well, when when volatility starts getting higher. I talk about this, right? When, when the stress level starts picking up in the markets, that's when volatility goes up. Why? Because people are fearful. Now, it doesn't have to be just fearful to the downside. People are also FOMO, right? Fear of missing out on the upside and go out and buy calls that um, and start paying up. And that actually, when the premiums start increasing due to volatility, uh, that's because people are fearful one way or the other. When volatility is really low, um, the premiums start coming off quite a bit, all right? So when volatility starts coming off, premiums start going lower, right? Well, volatility is a major component of the options premiums, probably one of the biggest components. Yes, one could say theta is, if you look way out in time, 150 days out, right? Those premiums are really fat, and that's has a lot of theta in there, but we saw theta, theta component is 
relatively benign compared to the delta and the vega coefficient well, moving back and forth, right? Um, in a matter of day, and we're talking matter of days here, right? Uh, over time, theta will obviously uh, be the thief in the night that really starts uh, eating away at your premiums. But, you know, is volatility low or do we have rain? You know, that's it's stressful when it's pouring down rain and you can only see 15 feet in front of you. Uh, that's when the stress level is relatively high. So what we need to do is determine is volatility high for that underlying or not. So what we want to do is take the current IV, all right, so we're looking at current implied volatility, all right, minus the uh, low volatility, implied volatility, that is. And we take that sum and divide it by the high IV minus the low IV. So basically what this uh, equation does is it gives us where the current implied volatility is in relation to the high and low. Now, we see, besides the black swan event of coronavirus, last time we saw VIX up in the 80s or something like that was back in the 80s, um, 1980s, that is. So what we're trying to do is most stocks have a pretty good range, generally speaking, besides black swan events, a pretty good range bound highs and lows. Yes, they will breach a sometimes above their previous high. But usually when they start approaching those highs, it, it, it starts rolling back over to about the midpoint. Same for instance, when volatility is you know, expressly low, it's going to have a tendency to migrate back up. All right, that's how the markets work. Just like when markets hit extremes, they have a, a correction in there or an imminent correction. Well, that's kind of what we're doing here with uh, implied volatility. And this is IV percent is what we're looking for, equals IV percent, all right, implied volatility percent. It's, and it's, it, it's, it's something we used to just say on the floor, and it's for lack of a better um, way to uh, express it, we just called it IV percent. You can call it anything you want, really, but we used to call it IV percent. So um, we're going to need to know whether or not implied volatility is high or low in this particular regard. So um, let me move on to the next one. So, uh, so we've got that, right? And we're gonna figure out where IV is in an example here in a minute, but why is implied vol why is volatility, why does it matter? Because that's gonna be the determining factor as to where the premiums are. Right, if volatility is at that high level, like when we determine it through that fraction IV percent, when IV percent is super high, that means those premiums are the most expensive we've seen, or at near the most expensive we've seen, right? So when it's expensive, what do you do? You wanna sell, right? And when volatility is super low, that's where we wanna be thinking we need to be buying premium for those directional assumptions, whether it's you know buying. Uh, a put for a bearish assumption when volatility is really low or protection, that's where we would be buying premium. But if we had a bearish assumption and those premiums were at elevated levels, that's where we've got to be thinking, all right, well, I've got a bearish assumption. I need to be selling calls, all right? So when volatility is expensive, we want to sell premium. When volatility is super low or implied volatility percent for that specific underlying is really low, that's where we have to start thinking we're buying uh, options and then we're gonna, that's gonna lead us to the option strategy we want. Well, with this particular one, we're looking at BABA. Um, <clears throat> we'll go through this phase right now. And this is what I was talking about. And when we're looking at BABA, we can see that uh, it has a tendency, you know, this is before Corona. This is that black swan event I'm talking about. Are we going to see this kind of spike again? I don't, I don't know. We, we could. Um, we're going to take it into account just in case. But you can see as BABA got up to these levels, it has a tendency to lose a little momentum. And it's starting to peel over uh, even now, or at least kind of flatten out. So do I want to 
buy, uh, buy premium or uh, sell premium with this particular trade, you think? What would you guys be thinking when you see, look at it besides necessarily even that? And yes, it could go up that high, but I'm, I'm kind of fading that. I'm kind of saying that, that it wants to kind of, well, that was not a very good line, stay within these areas right there, right? It's definitely not a straight line, but uh, I think that it's going to, I really wanted to draw this like that. <laughs> um, so I think that it's going to want to stay within a certain boundary. And to me, this is low and this is high, right? So for me, I think I'm, I've got to be starting to think, all right, I need to look at where uh, this pricing is. So if we look at even this as the high, that's basically, you know, that mark right there is 73, right? 0.73, right? But we're talking percent, so we times it by 100. And this low here, I'm just going to take everything into account, is 23. And yes, it's 0.23, but multiply by 100. And right now, it's right around 55.8-ish, uh, right? So what do we do? We take the current IV, right? Minus the low uh, IV. Take that sum divided by the high IV minus the low IV, right? Take those two sums. So basically, we've got 50, uh, what did I call, let's call it 56, just rounding. 56 minus uh, 23, I said, right? And then the high was 73 minus 23. So we've got basically, um, 33 divided by 50, which is going to equal 66 percentile. All right. So 66 percentile, that would basically equate to high volatility. All right. So one of my rules that I wanted to talk about is, and I, I may be getting ahead of myself here. Uh, high volatility is basically going to be when it, uh, IV percent is greater than a 50%, right, for a stock, all right, and for an ETF, an ETF is when uh, IV percent is greater than a 30, right? Now, if you're newer to options trading or you're newer to uh um, or have a lower risk parameter uh, that, you know, you don't like to take a ton of risk. And this is going to be, quote unquote, a higher risk strategy because it has uh, unlimited risk to the upside. Um, I have no problem you saying something like, you know, OK, well, I'm going to kind of adjust that. And if it's above 75 percent, um, I'm good to go. And this is above a 50 percent. And why is an ETF? Uh, anybody else lose sound? Uh, Rick Hammer said he lost sound. I don't know if he's messing with me or not. Um, if you ever lose sound, and it's not going to help you if you did lose sound right now, but if you ever lose sound, uh, one thing to do is log off and log back on um, for future reference. And that goes with any webinar. Uh, my thing is saying, let me just double check. I think I can see my... Um, Audio moving back and forth. Yes, my it says my audio is moving back and forth. All right. Um, all right. So uh, so that's where that, you know, back to the whole red light, green light kind of thing. This would be your green light. All right. Uh, you don't want to be selling and try and stick to this. All right. You know, maybe a yellow light is just between 50 and 75 percent a green light is above 75 percent you can think about it that way all right uh anything you know below 50 uh or, or higher than from 30 to 50 and an etf is a yellow light for you and above that is a green light okay you can think of them that way too is this ib rank um you can think about it as a ranking um it's all Implied volatility is 
is a percentage kind of thing or Vega is a percent. So we always talked about it as a Vega, but you could think about it as, as we rank this higher or lower. I don't have a problem with that. On the floor, we used to always call it IV percent. So that's kind of what I stuck with. Um, all right, so uh, implied volatility percent for the BABA we determined was um, for this one was 66. So that would be above 50. That means we have high volatility, right? All right. So now a couple of things we got to think about here. All right. All right. We have high volatility. All right. So that means we have premiums that are really expensive. And if we have really expensive premiums, what are we thinking we want to do? We think we want to sell it. All right. Now, if we want to sell premium and take advantage of some volatility coming out, that's how we're going to make money very quickly is if that volatility comes out, right? Um, and we're just trying to limit all our risks here. We, so we're thinking we want to sell because uh, I've got a bearish assumption in BABA. Now we also have to think, what duration do we want? Logically speaking, if we are selling premium and we want that premium to go down and be in our favor, we want it in our camp. We want the thief to help us out while we want the duration to be closer to expiration, right? We want basically somewhere around 35 days to expiration is the sweet spot, all right? It is uh, what we used to say on the floor was like the best day to get into selling premium and option or the worst day you know, to be buying option premium. Why? Because that thief in the night, that's when he is aggressive. He knows you are not locking your doors and he is coming in and uh, taking all the money he can from you. Um, so basically, you know, we want to kind of take a quick road to get there. We want to get there very fast, right? We don't want to take our time. We want to expedite that duration. So we want to, get, you know, we want to get beelining to get there. Um, so where's my pen? When you're selling options premium, which I talked about, we got high volatility. We want to be selling. We're thinking we want to lean towards selling that premium. We want to, the trader wants to exploit that theta decay. And this is what I was talking about. This is that sweet spot, 35 days to expiration. If we look down here, you can see way out in time, this obviously is a flatter and we can't get rid of theta, right? We already talked about that. He's always going to be stealing your premium. Can't completely stop it. But, you know, inside of this area is really where we see those premiums start to accelerate to the downside. You lose 50% of your premiums just inside of this day here. Now, I don't like to necessarily hold on to, you know, yes. You could look at it like, okay, well, if this is 50% drop here. This is another 50% drop here, right? Well, yes, that is true. But one of the things with that, um, the problem with the seven days to expiration is you're going to be a lot closer to where the underlying is currently trading, uh, right? Because there's not very much premium in there. The deltas are going to be um, a little bit uh, tighter as well. So, the sweet spot really is the closest to 35 days to expiration. Now, we're talking, you know, 15 days to expiration or uh, that 40 some days to expiration there. This one's obviously uh, the one that is what we're going to be looking at because we want to take advantage of this acceleration and premium. Another thing to think about is when volatility, if this is, just a normal curve on the at the monies. And yes, we're gonna be doing out of the money. So the curve is gonna be a little bit different. We, uh, but this just, I'm trying to get you guys to get the cogs uh, turning as to as to why we're doing this, right? Why, what is the reasoning for uh, what Wolfman has come up with for guidelines? So what we're doing is we can think about this as when volatility comes in, it's like, Volatility comes in and it's like a balloon. It blows up that balloon and it starts expanding, right? Uh, it's, it's getting pumped full of premium. Well, that's what volatility does on this curve also. So if we're thinking about these just the premiums, 
we can see that volatility will kind of push it out, could even push it higher, right? And then if we get that where the volatility starts coming out, well, that balloon kind of I'll blow all the air comes out of it and it catches back up to the line there. So in the meantime, you get a much bigger drop coming out of those premiums, all right? They really super deflate. So uh, we wanna take advantage of that. So I'm worried about a sideways move, maybe even a slightly higher move in this underlying in BABA. I, I want to avoid any retest of that 300. I did the short call spread last week on the 300. Um, the 300, sold the 300 calls, bought the 310 calls. Well, those got tested. Um, now I, I don't really want to, now that the market's come back off, had a confirmation, that 300 level could be another retest. So I want to avoid that, all right? So, um, and if I were going to do the call spread following those guidelines again that we did last week, I'd be selling the 300, buying the 310 again. And we're going to go over that here. So I want to avoid that. So that's part of my thinking here. I'm still bearish uh, today on BABA. So what vehicle are we going to use? We're going to be using that short call, right? I want to use the naked short call this time. I don't want to get uh, that retest. So what spots are we going to visit? Well, we're going to do the out of the money 16 Delta call, all right? That's the best uh, bang for your buck. Remember, we talked about the 16 Delta call. If I get my directional move, every dollar down in BABA, I'm only losing 16 cents in premium. You know, obviously, it's it, the further directionality, I'm correct, that delta is going to fluctuate and probably get smaller. But when volatility is really high, you know, delta is a product of the premiums as well and volatility. So when volatility is really high, that 16 delta call, keep in mind, that strike location it is about as fur far as fur as far away as it has been, right? When volatility is really low, those the premiums start shrinking. If if we were just trading sideways, right? Market didn't move, and we saw that volatility come out, right? I could see if volatility started coming out and the underlying didn't move, I could start seeing my deltas start to downtick, right? It goes from 16 to 14 to 13, right, to 10, all right? Those deltas are going, because the probabilities of that strike being tested are getting smaller as volatility gets smaller. Because volatility is it also determines the range, how far these this underlying is expected to move in the, move in the future. Uh, um, so, we as volatility comes out, we can see my delta start to down tick as well, and those premiums are starting to come out. All right, so that's another reason why we want to take advantage of that. And it's one of the reasons. Another thing that delta is is the probabilities of being in the money. So if we're looking at the standard deviation curve, and I'm looking at um, the 16 delta, well, we can see probabilities like right now we're currently right here. Right. Well, 16 delta is basically going to be looking at 16%, right? 16% chance of probability or 16% chance of being in the money or the probability of 16% of being in the money. And we can look, if we add all of these up, it's gonna come very close to 16%. And you know, if you've been on a bell curve ever before in grading, you know that, you know, you're, uh, these are basically your A's, these are your B's, you know, C's, whatever, uh, C's are right here, D's and F's kind of thing, right? Well, this also tells me that there's a 16% probability of the market moving higher from the onset of BABA right here currently today, right? But what does that also mean? This is an 84% chance of happening in the next 40 days. So yes, the underlying, you know, if you're thinking about a chart, yes, the underlying could start to move higher, right? But it's only a 16% chance that it's going to get up to my XYZ strike. 
uh, shoot, strike, right? So the market could move up there, but it's only a 16% chance of that happening. But, you know, it's basically an 84% chance of all of this happening, you know, in X, Y, Z, if you're thinking about it as a chart, right? It could, or, you know, it can, but it's, you know, it might come up there and hit that 16 delta in the next 48 days. There is a, uh, what is it? There is a 34% or sorry, 32% chance of that happening. Why? Because this is a floor trader hack and it, I don't have back testing on it, but this is something that people that have been trading much longer than me have come up with. And I've been trading for over 25 years. I still stick to this rule. You know, Delta is probabilities of being in the money by one penny at expiration. Okay. That is a given. Now, a floor trader hack is two times the delta is the probability of being touched, meaning the market during that, that time comes up and actually touches it, all right? Probability of being in the money is only 16%, while the probability of being touched, meaning it comes up and hits my strike, is two times the delta, and that's uh, a 32% probability. So you, when you know your probabilities, you know uh, the likelihood of something happening, then you know it also helps you stay mechanical, right? When you know, when I, I'm taking the mystique out of it all, then you know, like if you put this trade on, you're like, geez, you said it was a 16% chance of being in the money at expiration. Well, I'm already hit in three days, right? Well, there is two times the delta is your probability of being touched. Just like in my, uh, short call spread, we were looking at the 36 delta. Well, that's basically a 72% chance of being tested. Well, those probabilities were pretty darn right. Came up there, tested it, close to it anyway, and then rolled back over. But, um, you know, knowing those probabilities will help you uh, sleep at night. Does that make sense for everybody so far? I don't see any questions coming up right now. All right, so let's take another look at BABA. So last week, and I just wanted to pull, this is the old slide from last week, right? Uh, one of those things we were talking about, you know, you move the decimal three ticks to the left, we got 28 cents, right? Uh, we look down here, we can call it 30 cents. And it's inside of it on a couple of them, right? It's a little bit wider on some of the other ones. Um, so we would say if we're trading BABA, this is probably a pretty good sign that it's a yellow light. If you get too many yellow lights throughout all of this stuff, then obviously that's when you want to walk away from it. But this was the only yellow light we saw last week was uh, the wider bid ask on this. And following those rules down here, right? Well, the short strike last week was the, uh, the 300 strike because we were looking at the 36 close to 36 delta, right? All right, well, with that being said, you know, we collected $2.87. We did something where it was right around that 36 delta, right? Now, this is a low risk strategy, they say, but the probability, we're right in and around where we're trading today, maybe a little bit higher. So it's 284 there. What are we at? 282 today, so it's slightly lower today than uh, where we were last week, right? Market's basically gone sideways. Volatility has gone up a little bit. So that's helped me out because we can see, um, sorry, the BABA is off of the top there, but 284 here and it was 53.76 last week. Now we've got two percentage point increase, right? So that two percentage point increase on Vega has added 50 cents to these premiums across the board. Now, if we did those same 300 strikes, uh, it's, uh, we'd be able to do the 305 strikes this week because that's right there at that same 37 delta. But let's just say we did that, sold the 1170s, bought the uh, 935s. The difference there is uh, what, um, $2.35 again? Do that math right, $2.35. And I'm just trying to do from the bid to the offers there. Uh, if I were to sell, the, had to sell the bid and buy the offer. So that's right around those same 
um, uh, premium, right? Probably want to go mid market on that. So, uh, so three dollars, let's call it, um, which is right there in line with my rules. Because I'm just basically going. If I went mid market, that's twelve, right? If I sold the three oh fives and bought the three fifteens to follow those rules from last week and did nine dollars in the middle, just to make it three dollars, right? So I collect three dollars on the call spread. That call spread, uh, limited risk lower risk strategy, but we know that probabilities of being in the money at expiration on those 305 calls is 37. Well, if I look at this one, the probabilities of being in the money on that 60 Delta or the one that is closest to 16, you know, it's kind of a pick them with, you'd have to be the one to decide. Let's just say we go with the 15 one here though. Uh, you know, I collected a $3 credit on this call spread here, right? The 305, the 315, for $3 credit, 37% probability of being out of the money at expiration. That's pretty good. I mean, it's better than flipping a coin for sure. I've also got a 74% probability, right? Remember two times Delta is the probability uh, of being kissed. That's what we used to say, really. Probability 74% chance of the market coming up and hitting those 305s, all right? Well, this one, I'm collecting, you know, pick them between them, let's just call it, the, I'm, I can collect $3.65 on these uh, 345s or 420s, which is basically hitting the bid, um, you know? And my probabilities are being in the money on those are only 17%, right? At expiration in the next 43 days. The other thing is two times the delta probability being touched on those 340s is 34. I mean, that's the probability of just better than the probability of just being in the money on those 305s. So a lot of times you're going to hear out there selling naked calls is too risky. Well, how do we how do we measure risk, right? Yes, this is unlimited risk to the upside with a short call. But my risk of losing money is much better with the call spread than it is with just selling naked calls. So to me, to me in my mind, my mind's eye, but I also have a higher risk tolerance, I'm not gonna lie. To me, this one has less risk because I'm thinking about probabilities. I, probabilities are probabilities are probabilities. Which has more of a probability of being in the money? The call spread. My entire, my probabilities of losing the entire width of the spread in the call spread is, is worse than the probabilities of being just in the money at expiration for this one. So that's why I always lean towards uh, selling a short call. You know, yeah, people might say that it's a higher risk, but to me, I'm looking at What's my risk of being in the money? What's my risk of losing money? Well, my risk of losing money uh, is greater for the call spread uh, than it is for the naked short call. So just something to say, I'm not saying don't ever do the call spread because of the probability. I'm just saying, you know, if you're worried about an upside pop, then obviously you wanna make some defined risk. And some people out there might be going, well, why don't you just make the call spread out there at the 17 Delta? Well, because you're you're only gonna collect a couple of pennies versus the width of that spread. And it's just the risk reward isn't there, all right? So we want a major downside move in that uh, underlying, okay? So just a real quick recap, direction, you know, you wanna be bearish, obviously, right? Des uh, direction, we have to have that as a direction. Our destination is the, you know, move the decimal three ticks to the left, right? Uh, and then basically it's less than or equal to um, that or 10 cents, right? If it's less than $100, you know, less than $100 or less than $100 stock. The environment, we want high IV jacked up. So for a stock, basically better than 50% ETF, 
How do I always do that? Is greater than 30, you know? And that's, kind of, you can say that's the yellow light. Um, you know, if you have a lower risk tolerance, maybe you go above 75%, above 50 here or something like that, right? Durations, we want it, we want to shoot for 35 days to expiration or closest to. Uh, expiry. All right. And the strike location, we're looking at that 16 delta or closest to. It's not always going to give you the 16 delta, you guys. So sometimes we're going to have to uh, finagle it a little bit. All right. Our max profit, profit is that premium received. Also, our max loss is unlimited. Remember, we don't have defined risk on this. My, my max loss are, is here. And that BABA, if it trades above, two, uh, what was it, $299, if I get a move above that, that's where I'm looking to get out of it, all right? Well, I, I got ahead of myself. All right, our break even is the short strike price plus, plus the premium received. So when I was looking at those uh, underlines, right, 345 was a strike. I was looking at $3.50, let's call it. All right, so... We're looking, say the 345 strike, uh, short the three, sell the 345 strike plus the uh, $3.50. So my break even uh, is going to be equal to 348.50. Right? All right. So that you get to keep that collection of credit, right? So whatever your collection of credit is, you always get to keep that so your break even is above that. And that's at expiration, you guys. Volatility expands or contracts in between that. You're going to see the fluctuation in that premium, so it's going to feel like it. This is that expiration after all of the volatility, the theta, everything else is kind of uh, ripped out of it. All right, so we're taking root baba. All right. And I'm looking at that 345 calls. On a winner, I'm looking to exit at 50% of max profit. Why? Because I, I want the quick moves. I want to get in and out of these as fast as I can. If I beat the probabilities, uh, then I'm looking to get out of it. Yeah, you can you can try and write it into the end of the day, but I find that if if on a market setup, you know, on a bit of a pullback here in BABA, you know, if I can get out of 50% um, of max profit, I'm looking to do that. It takes a long time for options to expire worthless. So, you know, that's just too much of a, a road to hoe, all right? I'd rather get in, get out rather quickly and, and do like I did with BABA. You know, if it goes against me, I get out quickly, right? You get in, out quickly. The, if you can get out of these for 50% of max profit over time, that will make up for um, make up for uh, any time you've tried to ride it all the way out and watch the market snap against you. You're just going to beat yourself up. And on a loss for me on this one, uh, I'm going to exit if if Baba uh, trades above 300. All right now, why am I going through this page right here? Because what we need to do is we have a plan, right? If you don't have a plan, you're planning to fail, all right? That's the bottom line. And the other thing is, is we need to stay mechanical. I'm trying to give you guys like guidelines to implementing these strategies so that you guys can take all of the uh, emotion out of these trades or out of this uh, trading thing. All right, because we are emotionally attached to money. You can't get around that. But what we can do is stay mechanical. Think about the probabilities of being in the money and all of that stuff, right? I'm out of 50% of max profit. There's no more thinking about it, all right? I just get out. Uh, Baba goes above 300, I'm out. I'm writing that stuff down, why? Because it will keep you mechanical. I can't tell you how many times I've seen people put on trades, especially even floor traders, where we didn't really write those things down, put on trades, and then it goes to where they said they were going to get out. And they're like, I'm just going to hold on to it for one more day and see what happens. Well, what happens? It continues to move. 
if, if they had a complete breakdown in their strategy or their uh, their uh, their mechanical trading regiment, all right? And that's going to cost you more money than not. So write those things down. Plus, you can go back and look at it. Did this stuff work out? Is it working out over time? Should I uh, should I tweak a couple of things? Okay, I have no problem with you tweaking a couple of things. Maybe you're saying, okay, I'd rather go to the 15 delta or something like that. Um, or I would always rather default further out of the money than further to, uh, at the money. And I usually default closer to at the money. So, you know, make sure you, you stay consistent with that so that you have the data to back yourself up, all right? Anybody else have any other questions? I know I got on a little tangent there, but this is really important, you guys. Know your exit and write that stuff down because then you are, you're beholden to somebody and that's yourself. If it's in your head and you're thinking I'm beholden to myself there, well, guess what? It's going to have a tendency to, uh, uh, I'll squeeze it out just a little, just, I'll sque I'm squeezing it, All right? Well, when you squeeze it, sometimes uh, that stuff blows up. You're trying to, you, you know, do you want the penny or do you want the trade? Right. Sometimes trying to get pick up those pennies is like picking up pennies in front of a steamroller. Right. Try and squeeze out those couple extra pennies. Well, basically, you get squeezed out with a steamroller and you're flattened. Right. Thanks. You like that? You like that one? <laughs> All right. Good enough. If I don't have any more questions, then I'll throw it out to you guys. Here is the offer. I'm going to throw this over there in the chat window for you. That you can take advantage of this. This is uh, basically uh, a course for trading earnings. And yeah, you might be saying, well, we're kind of already through earnings or we're at least most of the way through earnings. Well, you also have uh, not only time to learn how to trade specific earnings, but this is also set, setting you up for the next earnings cycle. So we've specifically geared this uh, course towards trading those earnings like in and out. You know, we're going to be using those. Uh, gamma trades those closer to the seven days to expiration in that one, you know, on longer term uh, other trades rather than uh, earnings. I don't usually go inside that seven days, but I'll show you different ways to trade using that shorter duration window. And that's when I use uh, the earnings with options uh, inside of that window usually. So it's a little bit different rules that we talk about in there. So make sure you uh, know those specifically. Uh, for $36, if you guys go on TV and you're watching TV and they're telling you how to trade earnings, most of those guys are saying go out there and buy calls for Tesla or whatever it is. And I will tell you that we talked about the volatility. Volatility is at extreme levels during earnings. And what happens with that volatility is it comes out after earnings. So if you are holding on to a long option, uh, being you bought that option, you are swimming upstream trying to fight that current of volatility crush is what we used to call it. You know, you get 10 percentage points dropping out of volatility overnight. Well, that is a big debt to your uh, value. So basically you're taking all kinds of risks. So those guys aren't always giving you the best advice and or, um, you know, it's free but it's gonna cost you in the long run on your uh, free education through your you know, bad setup, right? Setting it up in the wrong time. So uh, for 36 bucks, you should be able to save you a lot of those pitfalls of uh, trading with those guys. So if you're watching this on tape delay, it's not in the chat window. You're gonna to have to look at that, pause it and punch that into your URL. But for you guys that are watching this video, that's the easiest way to get a hold of it. All right. Thank you guys all. If you have any questions, comments, or anything else, you can call us at 310-598-6677 or trading at protraderstrategies.com. Again, there is the uh, link. It's not a hot link. You'll have to pause the webinar and um, check that out there. Also, please take a moment to go over this disclaimer before you break out on me because we are an educational company. I'm not trying to get you guys to go out there and sell calls in BABA tomorrow. I probably will. So watch the daily market commentaries. I'll talk about that trade uh, there. Uh, and um, and then you can follow along each day, how I'm trading, how I'm staying mechanical, all of that stuff in my entire portfolio. 
So please check that out. You can follow us on Facebook, like I said. And that's about all I got for you guys. Um, the link is, is over there in the window. That's the hot link. And if you can't take that, take it easy. Uh, I'll flip it back. Thanks, Alexander. Appreciate it. Have a good weekend, you guys. If I don't see you tomorrow, bye for now. Appreciate you, Kirk. Thank you. Thanks, Alexander. Take care.